Sweden has a lot of interesting train companies, such as low-cost operator FlixTrain or MTRX, run by the Hong Kong Metro Company. And perhaps you have already heard of today's operator, Snellturket, which is well known for their night trains here on YouTube. But that's not what we are going to check out today. Instead, we are taking one of their daytime trains between Stockholm and Malmö. As the budget alternative to SJ's high-speed trains, is Snellturket a good alternative? Let's find out as I show you the entire onboard experience on board one of their trains from Stockholm to Link Shipping. Hello and good morning from the central railway station here in Stockholm. Right, let's get inside and explore this magnificent looking station before we catch our train. The main station here in Stockholm is probably my favorite in the Nordics. I just really like the roof with its purple touch. And you can pretty much get anything done here, as the station even has a hairdresser, a licorice store, and on the level below the main waiting hall, we'll find even more stores and restaurants. I'd recommend visiting the Coop supermarket, as it's cheap. But if you're not a penny-counting university student like me, there's also plenty of other options. Access to most departure platforms is through this passageway on the lower level. And that's also the case for our journey today. The station is fully accessible, however not from every underpass. So if you've got heavy luggage or otherwise struggle with stairs, make sure to consult the station map. I however only have my small backpack with me, so I got no issues. Parked next to our platform is one of SJ's local hall daytime intercity trains. I have a review coming up on this in the future, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel to not miss it. We are however catching Snell Turkett's 928 departure bound for Malmö. And here our train comes, snaking its way through the curvy platforms here at Stockholm Central Station. Our train is pulled by one of Snell Turkett's Siemens Vectron locomotives that are capable of speeds of up to 200 km per hour. And trailing right behind is this strange looking orange car, which we are gonna have to check out later in the video. Right, let's get on board. Seats on board Snell Turget are reserved, and I have a spot in carriage number 14 today. The trains are unfortunately not step free, so if you require assistance, this will have to be booked in advance online on Snell Turget's website. The train is already looking really busy today, so it must be a popular offering. It took me quite some time to reach my seat. But here we are. I managed to grab one of the solo seats when booking my ticket. There's only very few of these, but they're great if you're traveling alone like me. Up above, you will find a rack for smaller luggage. We ended up departing Stockholm Central Station a few minutes behind schedule at 9.35. We begin our slow departure out of Stockholm, passing right through the Gamla Stan neighborhood, and then passing over one of the two Oster bridges. This one in particular is the oldest one, dating back to 1929, so it's almost coming up on its 100 year anniversary. And with us now well on our way, it's about time we take a look at the route map for today's journey. We are taking Snelltoke at train number 3941, which starts here at Stockholm Central Station and then continues with stops in Södertälje Sud, Norshipping and Linkshipping, where I will end my journey. The distance to Linkshipping is 226 km, which the train is scheduled to cover in 1 hour and 54 minutes, giving the train an average speed of 119 km per hour. After Linkshipping, the train stops in Nesjö, Alvesta, Hesselholm, Eslöf, Lund and finally Malmö. Leaving Stockholm, we were doing our best to make up the small delay. But as we approached Södertalje Sud, this was unfortunately hindered. 
As we pulled into Söder Charle Syd, our train was put on one of the side platforms, and we ended up waiting around 10 minutes here. I thought we were gonna get overtaken by one of SJ's high-speed trains, but I checked the delay reason, and it was shown as sabotage, so I'm not really sure what that entails. And now with a delay of 10 minutes, we are on our way again. And while we try to make up some of the delay, let me show you around the train. Sneltoe only offers one class of travel, which is laid out in a 2 plus 2 layout, mostly airline style, but with a few bays of 4. There's plenty of luggage storage throughout the train. The carriages used are fairly old, but have been refurbished nicely. Continuing further down the train, we get to the dining car called Kroen. Sneltoe offers the ability to reserve a dining spot in advance when booking your ticket, which is great if you want to make sure you can get a seat, but it can make it a bit harder for spontaneous visits if you don't want to do the takeaway option. There's a good selection of people who had meals, snacks, drinks on offer, at reasonable prices, especially considering we're in Sweden. I really like the ambience of this dining car, and I think it will be really cozy during the night hours. Continuing further down the train, we get to the strange orange coach, which has an even more strange interior. It definitely lacks luggage storage, but the seats looks actually more comfortable. These remind me of the ones in ÖBB's Railjet first class, but just in a 2 plus 2 layout. But even more strange, there's also compartments for the rest of the carriage. These carriages used to belong to now defunct German operator Lokomo, which got the carriages from the Netherlands. I guess they have just hired this in for extra capacity or something, but I actually don't know, so if you have any idea, then let me know down in the comments. But most importantly, we gotta do the toilet review. It looks like the handle for the door lock is missing, but it can still be locked. The bathroom is looking fairly clean. The water seems to be working. But the flush doesn't sound healthy, so uh, I'm giving this a passable. Despite Sneltoget also being able to run at 200 km power, like SJ's high-speed trains, they lack the ability to tilt around corners, meaning the journey times on Sneltoget often are slightly longer. We are now approaching Norshoving, our second intermediate stop. The city used to be an industrial powerhouse, often named Sweden's Manchester, being well known for its textile industry. But I remember it more for being the only city outside of Stockholm and Gothenburg to have retained its tram network. Due to the delay, our stop here was only very brief, and we are very soon on our way again. Norrköping and Linköping are located roughly half an hour from each other, so I think it's about time we start doing the seat review. The seats feature a nice slightly winged headdress, with well padded back support in this nice fabric. There's a small storage pocket, as well as a nice big sturdy tray table. Down below is where you will find the power outlet. You will find a movable armrest made of wood as well. So, pretty comfortable. And just like that, we begin our approach into Linköping Central Station. And that means it's about time we talk about tickets. So I was traveling on a complicated through ticket from Stockholm via Linköping and Kalmar to Copenhagen, but that won't be of much use for most travelers. Tickets can easily be booked online on the Sneltoget website instead. Looking three weeks ahead on a random first day, fare seems to start at 149 Swedish crowns, which is about 13 euros. To me, this seems like good value for a roughly two hour train journey. And just like that, we pull into platform number one at 11.30, running eight minutes behind schedule. I've really enjoyed my journey with Snell Target. It's relatively fast, it's comfortable, and if you can get a good ticket price on it, I see no reason why not to travel with them. Thank you so much for joining me on today's trip. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I try to upload a new video every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at InterCitySimon. I usually post live for my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching.